Okay, so let's look at this model. In the next thing, I have a cockpit right here. And you see it right there. So what I'm going to do here is try to get that uh, above without, you know, kind of wrecking the topology of things. And topology is really important in this case because what I want to do is make it so that I can harden these edges up if I want to using uh, like a, kind of a bevel technique. So uh, let's go into the faces here and take these faces. And what I'm going to do is insert an edge loop in this area. So control E to extrude, then right click R. And I'm just going to scale this just a little bit this way, just a little bit this way. This will make it so this is a separate form altogether. And I don't have to wreck the topology of the overall vehicle just to harden up the windows or harden up the frame. Trust me. Okay, let's go into the side view. Control E again, and I'm just going to go like that. This time I didn't do anything fancy, I just moved it up because I'm going to be moving these points manually. There we go. Just like that. Okay, I can also get that, that skinny look because look at it here in the top view. All right, well, in this case, I'm going to grab my set of vertices. Remember, you only scale in the top view. Make sure you get all your vertices. Here's an another trick I usually do is jump into my one view, then scale. View, get the angle that I need, seven. Again, just getting the overall shape down pat. And I'm only concentrating on an average or one side of this because of the orthographics. At this point, you know, you got enough points in here that you can do a really nice average. In the top view, I can make this toggleable again. And I have a few more points of reference, so I can kind of move this in. And because of those points of reference, I can get a nice average. And then I'm going to lock that view again. So as you go along, you can make fine adjustments to your orthographic views. So this is what I have now. Okay, let's pretend that I want to bevel these windows in. Kind of like how it is in the orthographic. For something like that, I don't concentrate so much on the reference. Um, I just concentrate on how it looks. Like here, for instance, I know that these windows right here, 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 and here, and here all get beveled. The back window does, but not the top. Okay. So, what I like to do is first make it so when I do do this, I can concentrate on hardening the edges later on. Here's why. So let me add a smooth modifier to this and just hit subdivide. You can see how everything just basically goes and deflates. 
except for the front. The front looks pretty decent. So what I want to do is make it so that always stays that way, where it has a halfway in between decent and not deflated. That's where I start using bevel a lot. And depending what you're going to use this for, as far as a, is it a game engine or what, I might be using this just for a render. So what I'm going to do is take and insert some edge loops here, here, here. And then I can kind of preview this. You can see now, it doesn't shrink up so bad. It still maintains its hard edge. Okay. Minus the fact that this needs to be adjusted. Control R. So if I put a bevel here, a bevel here, Again, I preview it by going like this, and now I'm starting to get a nice average. Nice. Okay, and then you can make fine adjustments like this, for instance. I would say that these points right here could come down a little bit further. And that will make it a little smoother in that region. If I follow this workflow to the letter, what will happen is later on I can do a, a reduction of polys. And I'll have to show you that later on. And the fact that, you know, if I have too many edge loops in an area, later on after I do a subdivide once, I can get rid of some of those. So that's why I insert so many bevels, because later on I know I can get rid of them. Okay, so there we go. Nice. So you don't want any crumpled up polys. You want something that flows nicely. And now let's we can do those windows and not have it interfere with anything else. All right, so here I'm going to go to face. I'm going to highlight this window. Now what happens here? If I do this bevel, it's going to affect my other window, right? I would need an edge loop here also. So now I have this face all by itself. Control E. And I'm just going to scale that in a little bit of green and a little bit of blue. Just like that. And I'm going to rotate it just a skosh. Okay, same with this one. Control E, scale it just a little bit. And again, I can see that I need to rotate it just a skosh. Love using that measurement term. It's so technically accurate. Okay, so three on the keyboard. Go into wireframe. 
Big, huge, hot mess, right? And it's starting to get really high as far as that goes. So what I'm going to do is get rid of my modifier because, yeah, it can get really high too fast. And then the modifier, when I, every time I go into object mode, it gets very confusing looking. So in this case, get rid of it. Okay, I want to highlight just single vertices, this one, and move it down. Keep your poly structure straight. Make fine adjustments, and you'll be so much happier for it. Okay, well, now that these windows have that bevel mark in them, I can hit uh, Control E and move them in. And it gives me that beveled look. I don't like how far I beveled it, so I'm going to undo that. Just a skosh. <laughs> All right. Now what I'm going to do is concentrate on only the top or the right hand side and then I'll mirror it over to the other side. Again, I look at this window and make sure that nothing is going to interfere with the previous window via bevel. In this case I'm going to insert a bevel here and insert a bevel here. And that will make it so it doesn't interfere with the other windows. Then control E to bevel that in. Just to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about here, what I'm going to do is re-add that modifier in. The multi-res. And I'll hit subdivide. Notice that the windows now collapse on each other, but the outside form stays true. Okay, so now Watch what happens when I put an internal bevel on the window itself. Do that so I can get out here further. There we go. So these edge loops go tight up against. Now watch what happens when I go back. Look how nice the window looks. It's nicely beveled, just because I inserted an edge loop here and here back in edit mode. I'm going to do the back window. Notice this happens. Again, control R, insert a bevel point here and a bevel point here. Hit tab and the window stays true. Alright, let's move on to the next video.